Very often you will have such a situation that to have a, uh, um, a bifurcation with some disease and it's always a challenge to discuss is this a one-stand, a two-stand strategy or a non-stand strategy. And very often we know that bifurcation stenting is not ideal because we, we all know if you put two stents in a bifurcation, usually you can, you can count the months or the years until restenosis will happen. So that's probably not good. We all know it. Um, we know also that one stent strategy is better, but sometimes you have to put two stents. And uh, I think we somehow need to simplify bifurcations. Now, we also know that lumen in PCI means everything. If you have lumen, then you have good outcomes. If you have a bad lumen, you have a bad outcome. This is also very clear, and this has been shown by different studies. Now, let me show you a case and challenge you a little bit. This patient is a 62 years old lady who refused cabbage. You will see um, the anatomy in the next slide. She has a non stemi and she has a left main stenosis. And of course, we discussed it in the heart team and decided for cabbage. Um, but this is the anatomy. So now the question is, well, how can we solve this? Who of you would have sent this patient to, uh, to cabbage as well? Who thinks PCI is the best choice? That's a bit more for PCI, so luckily she rejected. Now, I think it's crucial in such situations, when you do PCI, then to decide to go for intravascular imaging. In this case, we see a little bit of thrombus, a little bit of plaque, but it's actually not heavily calcified, and this looks, this, this looks doable with stents. So she, she could have a good outcome. Now, how did I do this case? Well, on OCD, I saw fibrocalcific plaque, a little bit of thrombus, which doesn't bother me. I knew the vessel size, and I think in intravascular imaging, as much as it's important to know the morphology, it's important to know the size of the, of the um, vessels, because with size we achieve lumen. In this case, I went in with a Wolverine for LED and circumflex. Um, I used a cutting balloon, which was slightly downsized, so I sliced side, I sized it according to the lumen. Then, because she had a bit of slow flow in the LED, uh, with a dissection, I decided to put a stent in the LED and then do um, a DCB in the side branch, in the circumflex, and you saw it was 1-1 bifurcation, and then we did final kissing. So this is how I treated it, cutting of both and stenting of the main branch, and then at the end, DCB and kissing. This was the final result which looks good, also from the cranial view, looks also very good, and this was her OCT. Now on OCT we see actually uh, the, the one the run on the left is from the LED um, to, circum to, from LED to left main, this is then the circumflex, you'll see a bit of thrombus, but we have a, actually a good lumen here. So we left it like that, and because this patient was treated with, with a PCI and we, we proposed a bypass surgery, we said, okay, we agreed to do a nine month angiogram. And at nine months, you can see, this looks actually very, very nice. And even more importantly, we did OCT. And on the left side again, uh, LED to left main, looks great. But even better, we can see here, look at this, the ostium of the circumflex, it's widely open. So I think we did a great thing for this patient, but that we did not put a second stand because a second stand probably would have uh, done bad to this patient, not good. Now, can we go further than that? Can we just say one stand and then uh, DCB for the side branch? Or can we do something, maybe even two uh, DCBs and no stand at all? This is a very young chap, 38, old, uh, 38 years old. Um, he has familiar dyslipidemia. He's also a smoker. Uh, and this is the anatomy. I'll show you some more pictures. But the question is two stands. Who is for two stands? Who is for one stand? Who is for no stand? Uh, no one is for no stand. Okay, let's see. So, basically, you can see it's actually, um, every one of us would say probably he needs at least one stent. Here again. So again, 3.25 Wolverine, we checked on OCT, um, and then on OCT, I, this is also something important to know that cutting balloons very often don't cause big dissections. It's a, it's a big lie that they cause dissections but very often you don't have the perfect lumen. And then you need to go in with a non-compliant balloon. In this case, it was an OPN. So we went with a 3.5 OPN. Then I treated the side branch with a DCB and then I treated the main branch with a DCB. And this was then the final result. You see angiographically, it's actually quite nice. 
Here you will see the effect, and we have enough lumen. It's a bit, it's a big lumen created already, and you can see here again with just with the Wolverine, I had MLA of three point of four point three, and with additional open balloon, I had an MLA of six point eight. Six point eight for a proximal LED is more than enough to function if I can keep it without metal. So we kept this patient without metal, and this is what it looked like at the end. Then at six months, we didn't. Um, angiographic follow-up and you see the LED looks fantastic so for all of you who wanted to put a stand it was not necessary it looks great so we left it I will conclude now when we have maybe uh, a bit of time for discussions so I think in bifurcations we need to simplify things and simplifying means putting less stands but we have to have uh, a good result so in order to achieve that, I think it's important to do a good lesion preparation. And the problem is that nobody actually knows what good lesion preparation means. Because for one, uh, is good lesion preparation is using a non-compliant balloon at very high pressure. For the other, is using a cutting balloon. For the third one, is something else. I think we need to dis define what is good lesion preparation. The aim must always be to have enough lumen and to have no flow-limiting dissection. And if you have lumen and no dissection, then you don't need a stent. But if you have a big dissection, and if you, have, if you don't have a big lumen, then you need a stent. As simple as that. So I simplify bifurcation PCI by basically downgrading stents to a bailout strategy. So I only put stents if it's in a bailout situation, if I need one of those two. And I, I don't declare the stent as the gold standard, which is completely novel and very provoking, I know that. Um, and I think we need prospective and randomized data. But who showed that we should always put two stents in bifurcations? We just do it because we have to. We don't have data to, to uh, support that. So thank you very much, and we have a bit of time. Thanks a lot. I have one uh, question here. Uh, for the good lesion preparation, you have been using the cutting ball in both the cases. Wolverine has been used. Uh, why was rota not used in, and why was a cutting balloon used in such both the cases? Uh, why was uh, rota not used, and why was cutting cutting balloon preferred in these both cases? Uh, thank you very much. So what I have found out that with cutting balloons, I have more luminal gain and I have less dissections. And the, we use cutting balloons now for, for basically standard lesion preparation once the lesion looks a bit more complex. And this is, for me, also as well new. I tried cutting balloons in calcified lesions. They don't work very well in calcified lesions, but they work very well in such lesions. That's why I use them a lot. Thank you, sir. I need to, uh, there are two things which come to my mind when I see your last case. One is that what was the long, the longest term follow-up that you had with this patient. Uh, and in the second patient where you showed that LED along with diagonal was there. Let's imagine that diagonal was not there and it was just an LED lesion. Uh, do we say that even in the absence of bifurcation, when we have lesions like this, we do a DCB and then leave them alone? Why just for bifurcation then? Why not in the absence of bifurcation? Say for example, diagonal was not diseased and it was just a usual routine LED which had that critical lesion in the mid. Why not advocate DCBs for all the lesions? What's the long-term data? I mean, that's what comes to my mind. Um, at the moment, we don't have a lot of data on using DCB for every lesion. I can tell you that I use DCB for all lesions I can. And for me, not only in bifurcations, but also in complex lesions, because I think if we, if we do something new, we have to solve an old problem. And an old problem is, is basically the lesions where we know stents fail. Bifurcations is one world where stents fail, so we need to get rid of them. And the other field is, of course, calcified lesions. I love DCB in calcified lesions. And in this young man, that lesion opened so nicely. I think even without the side branch, you should go that for a DCB. That would open nicely, even, in, if, even if it was not a bifurcation. So yes, then. absolutely. I fully agree. Uh, when you are treating the side branch of the DCB, uh, where will you keep the proximal end of the balloon? And the ostium or uh, in the main vessel? So you mean the size of the balloon? The proximal end of the balloon, the marker. Ah. Where will you keep it? Um, in the side branch. The side branch balloon. Yeah. I usually, I treat it like like a normal uh, case where I would not think of a DCP. So just, just... Um, open it the traditional way. The, 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 the markers are basically, the, the lesion is between the markers. Uh, maybe you ask the osteo, the osteo, and the yeah, osteo, Also for the osteum, yeah. I go in with the balloon, I open it nicely, yeah. and if it dissects, it's okay. A little bit of a dissection is fine. As long as it's lumen, we know it's going to become better. Okay. You keep it at the osteum. The yeah. Okay. Florian, uh, like two, two, two points. Uh, like, uh, what about the size of the cutting balloon? One is to one. 
Very good question. Sizing of the cutting balloons, I do it according to healthy lumen. So in my first case, the, the EL to EL was 3.7, but the size of the lumen was 3.3, 3.4. Then I went to the 3.25 and went to 22 atmospheres. So I don't, I don't oversize, I downsize cutting balloons and also high pressure balloons and go with high pressure. See, I yeah. think it's safer. Yeah, the other thing which you showed, you went up to 25 atmosphere. Yeah, that's so, completely safe. If you if you downsize and if you use imaging. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.